her early TikToks in 2020 started off as anti-diet culture. So no shame in indulging what you like, very much health at every size, a rhetoric, and also very much an advocate of intuitive eating. Very much the mission of her early TikToks is getting rid of food anxiety and overthinking what's good and not good to eat. She also wanted to get the message to her viewers that all bodies were healthy and to never feel ashamed about any body size or what you put into it. By the end of 2020, she leaps into sharing recipes. Also, by the end of 2020, she amassed enough of a following to sell courses on intuitive eating and anti-diet dieting. There's one TikTok that's very interesting, and it's the one in which she is talking about how to end the stigma of dieting when creating smoothies. So she shares a smoothie recipe. And the video, which was posted in November of 2020, is titled Rules to Break When Making the Smoothie. So the smoothie she's demonstrating making is what not to make. But it's interesting that she actually makes the item to consume that she says people shouldn't and actually does consume it. And one of the rules to break when making the smoothie as an anti-example is do not make it under caloric, but she makes an under caloric smoothie and actually does indulge in it. So why didn't she actually make the things she said you're supposed to make? I understand that she was trying to say, hey, don't believe these lies when you're making something for yourself, but why did she have to actually do it as well? Now, although I personally don't really like health at every size or intuitive eating, I'm not going to say that they're inherently bad things in themselves. Depends what the agenda is that they're used for. And up until the end of 2020, I don't necessarily think everything Colleen said is harmful. Until this TikTok about breaking the stigma of eating, as with many of her TikToks. This one is pushing it too extreme. La la la, whatever. La la la, it doesn't matter. La la la, oh well. La la la, we're going at it tonight, tonight. There's a party on the rooftop, top of the world tonight. Also by the end of 2020, she has a sponsorship for a granola company. But Colleen exemplifies what I think is also the worst of anti-diet culture and health at every size and intuitive eating. She rails against all diets are bad, eat whatever you want. And then also everyone should just eat what they feel like. Well, if somebody does willingly want to go on a diet for whatever reason, then why is that a bad thing? Because if she's saying eat whatever you want, do what you want with your body, then railing against somebody eating a diet is then is the opposite of the message she's trying to convey about no shame around food. Why should people feel shame because they just don't want to eat certain things for whatever personal reasons? In another TikTok addressing the criticism I just said, she explains why diets are dangerous and how they can become obsessive. but nothing is more obsessive than her TikTok all about foods constantly and eating them and eating whatever you want. That's obsessive because she constantly rails against all the dangerous thoughts people have against food. And yet her reasoning for why all those thoughts are dangerous just seem to be very vague and just because she personally doesn't like it because she had some bad experiences with it. And this TikTok against weight loss coaches is another example of her extreme views that are borderline gospel-like against diet culture. I know it seems so great that all these weight loss coaches are now saying, it's okay to eat the carbs, don't worry about it, you can eat anything, but here's the deal. If there's any ounce of making food less than, deeming it bad, or setting limits, it's still a diet. And even that mentality is gonna cause you to not listen to your body and likely eat past fullness. There are diets in disguise. It's interesting because so many TikToks about the same things over and over again, intuitive eating and the dangerous thoughts of dieting, really come off as fear-mongering. Because I understand the message of our TikTok is to try to inspire the viewers to not feel ashamed about their bodies or eating something that they want to eat and all. And yet the TikToks also come under the assumption that so many people 
whoever is going on a diet immediately has all these issues, which to me just comes off as projection. And what's interesting is in the beginning of 2021, like this TikTok posted on February 22nd, she starts to slim down a lot more. You ready? Let's go. Though, to be fair, she always seemed to be slim. She was covering up her body more on older TikToks. All of her TikToks take place in a hypothetical scenario that I assume is somewhat relatable to her, but she never talks about this. Again, it's for the hypothetical lives her followers are living, which again just seems very scary and something that I don't think applies to a lot of people at all who either are interested in dieting, have dieted, or have some body dysmorphia, yet... To her, the world of dieting seems to be a very scary place and something very apocalyptic, almost like a zombie apocalypse is happening. In this TikTok posted in March 17, 2021, she brands herself seemingly a bit as a health expert talking about three full food rules and why it's bad for you. And again, these statements are misleading because yeah, you could say what she's saying is correct, but also these aren't really the concerns people have when they're dieting. I think they're concerns she just made up. Here are three reasons why having food rules can actually hurt your gut health. Our gut microbiomes love variety. So cutting out foods unnecessarily, not super great. Stressing about what you eat can actually cause indigestion. And a lot of our bogus food rules out there that we think are gonna improve our gut could actually cause nutrient deficiencies. In this TikTok posted April of 2021 about how food tastes, this, I think, is an eating disorder brain talking because she's savoring food so much to the point she's eroticizing it. She is so focusing so hard on one little tiny snack as if that's the only thing she's really allowing herself to eat. Instant mindful eating. Let's go. Just ask yourself, how does the food taste? Guys, it's so easy, but immediately brings you back to the present moment and off of autopilot mode. And the taste is actually going to lessen as you go. This is a subtle fullness and satisfaction cue, but you have to be paying attention to notice it. And guys, if you have not tried Satan Fair birthday cake granola, you need, I'm literally obsessed. Also, now we're into June of 2021, and I've noticed the only thing she really talked about eating are fruit, granola, and brownies and cookies. And pretty much I only saw a protein one time, and that was in the very first TikTok where food was shown. But also in June of 2021, she does show protein. And this TikTok is scary. This is her comparing her meals to her husband's. And she says it's okay to eat significantly more than your partner. Okay, we need to clear this up. This, this was my husband's plate. And this one, that one was mine. It is very much okay for you to eat more than your significant other for someone bigger than your size for a woman to eat more than a man. They don't have the same body as you do. They don't have the same needs. You do you. On this day, for me, that meant eating more than my six foot two husband. And I am not six foot two. It's fine. Obviously, every day is different. And this was just that day. Her plate doesn't look like there's significantly more food than her partner, but to her that is, which again isn't indicative of an eating disorder brain. It's also interesting that in one of the TikToks I showed, she talked about how it's important to have variety of food you're consuming. There is no variety in food you're consuming. It's cookies, peanut butter, bananas, ice cream, and that's about it. And again, this TikTok talking about comfort food and eating past fullness is contradictory because she talks about eating past fullness. It's fine if you're still craving food, even if you're full. And she's sharing a situation where she felt the same way. But what did she go to? Not food. She went towards having tea. So it shows she doesn't even follow her own rules. If you finish a meal and you find yourself still wanting to eat, even though you are full and satisfied, try asking yourself what it is that you are truly wanting. Sometimes that is gonna be more food. That happened to me, I just had lunch and I wanted something sweet, so I had some chocolate ice cream. But then I still kind of felt like I wanted to eat, even though, again, I was full and satisfied. So I asked myself what I was wanting and it was really just comfort and something warm, just relaxing a little bit. So I'm making some tea. So try that. Next time, ask yourself, what am I truly wanting? Sometimes, yes, it might be more food, a specific type, but it might be something else that you're trying to have food satisfy. Like for me, cool. By June of 2022, I'm just fully convinced she has a really bad sugar addiction. 
All I've seen her consume mostly is brownies, cookies, and ice cream. This TikTok of a day of no food rules is just an example of that. Full day of no food rules. I made my super fluffy banana protein shake in the morning. It is so good. I also had some granola before this. I added some sprinkles to it just to make it more fun and enjoyable. Also, I just started cleaning my blender like this and it is the best thing ever. Just put hot soapy water in there and let it go. When I felt some hunger cues later on, I made this little bowl. I took mush overnight oats, which are really great, added some Greek yogurt and some other toppings. It was a super busy morning of meeting, so I ate at my desk. Not the most mindful, but it happens. When I went to make lunch, I saw these random leftovers from taco salad last night, so I add those as I got everything out for lunch. I made a salad kit wrap with some rotisserie chicken. So good and easy, you guys. You've got to try it. And watermelon. More meeting, so I crushed a protein bar in between them. I don't need to hear this, but you can have ice cream at any time of day. I had some mid-afternoon when I had a sweet tooth craving. For dinner, I made chicken shawarma plates, and they're so good. One of my favorite warm weather meals. Then I took my CBD gummy and went to bed. How is she not diabetic? This TikTok explains her business, and it's all about, again, eating happily, and yet everything she eats is the most miserable thing I've seen ever. The Society, which is spelled E-A-T-Y, because we're a community who eats, is the online membership community, the best place to really work on your intuitive eating journey. When you join the Society, you have a step-by-step -step roadmap on what to do. We have videos, we have a private podcast, we have different downloadable resources and workbooks, we have recipes, everything that you need in order to stop dieting and make eating easy again. After society members have been in the group for a while, they say, I feel like I have my life back. And that is what my goal is. Because as great as it is to eat a delicious waffle cone full of your favorite scoop, it's more about feeling like you are living. I want people to feel like they can do this. You can live a life with no food rules. And this TikTok of another day with no food rolls, yeah, I mean, you could say that there's a good enough variety of food this time as opposed to others, although there's still too much sugar happening in there. Again, the portion sizes look a, air a little too small. Here's a full day of eating with no food rolls. Freezer waffles are my jam. They're a great source of carb for a base, and you can load them up with some fat and protein. I did one sweet and one savory this morning. I was also still a bit hungry, so I just had some leftover stir fry. We went out to brunch, and I couldn't decide if I wanted sweet or savory, so my husband and I ordered one of each and did a little share. So felt hunger cues mid-afternoon, so grabbed a protein bar for ease. Simple dinner of barbecue chicken, grilled veggies, my fave, and then frozen french fries because I just needed a carb. Post-dinner sweet tooth. This stuff is so good, you guys, and hi, Theo. Be sure to save this video if you thought it was helpful. In this TikTok, it's interesting because uh, for the first time I've seen an intuitive eater also say intuitive eating is basically the same as emotional eating and it's totally fine. Here's a hot take on emotional eating. Rather than saying, I can't eat that emotionally, I shouldn't have that. I actually would recommend flipping that and saying, I can eat all of this if I want to. I have permission to literally eat everything. I can do that. The question is, do you want to and will that be helpful? When we always say, I shouldn't do this, it actually makes us want to do that more. So I don't recommend that. I can eat all the cookies if I want to, but is that actually gonna fix my bad day? Or is it gonna add to it by giving me a stomach ache? What would help me handle the emotions that I'm feeling? So give that a try next time you feel yourself emotionally eating. I can eat all this if I want to. The question is, do I want to, and will that be helpful? Be sure to save this video if you thought it was helpful and to give it a try the next time you find yourself emotionally eating. But also I think it's an indicator of her eating disorder brain because there's a line in there where she said, if I shouldn't do this, I'm gonna want it more. Again, I think that's just more indicative of her, not the people she's trying to reach because she's making out food to be like a drug. But why does she see food as a drug? Is it because she's really afraid of it? By late 2022, she starts doing these series of like lunch boxes kind of things where she like puts out like a little tray with like food in there, different foods for a lunch variety. And it's interesting because you can see here that is significantly way too little food in her what's seen as a healthy meal with a lot of great variety of foods. Super easy, but yeah, everyone's gonna be so jealous of your lunch. Cranberry pecan roll-up box coming at you. Spread some cream cheese onto a tortilla, then you're gonna sprinkle some chopped up deli meat and follow it with cranberries, pecans, and spinach. Roll it on up. If you have time, pop into the fridge before you cut it. It's a lot easier to cut that way. I'm adding some cucumbers to my box, and a cool thing is if you just twist them a little bit, it makes a little checker pattern. Cute, huh? Now grab your roll-up, and now we're gonna slice into about one-inch slices. Gorgeous! 
Now grab your lunchy box and let's get that baby filled. Put your pinwheels in there and then I'm adding some grapes, those cucumbers, and then a Twix for a little something sweet. See, I told you it was super easy, yet so impressive. And you know what else is impressive? Little do you know that was like my fifth try. Be sure to take a second to save this video so you can give this lunchbox a try. She did have a sponsorship in 2020, but she didn't have one until early 2023. And it's interesting that I think even though she had, they now has a really good fan base with some TikToks getting the tens of millions of views, I think companies are onto her and realize she is not a good representation for sponsoring for food. I think Colleen Christensen suffers from very serious anorexia and body image issues. And her way of fighting it is to create a food advocacy brand to convince herself she isn't who she has really become. She, out of the box, right from the get-go, jumped into TikTok with this health at every size intuitive eating lifestyle brand. Not even a few TikToks, just the screw around. She jumped right into it. I think that was because she truly believed if she could build an audience based off loving food and being against dieting, she could remain in denial of the eating disorder she has and her body image issues. And it's interesting that she branded herself as no food rules, as an eat whatever you want. That also goes the other way where she allows herself to eat whatever she wants and she believes what she wants to eat is what's going to make her smaller and thinner. So she has permission to want to eat what is actually dangerous for her since it's no food rules. That includes rules against things that are bad for you. 